guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i will be showing you guys how to make an orbiter in ksp2 uh i sound weird because i just recently got braces so please excuse me for that and in today's video i will also be showing you guys how to orbit with your orbiter except the orbiter is not going to be capable of coming back down to Kerbin because of some fuel issues Maybe you might be able to manage the fuel better and make sure it can come back, but this one can't. I'll make a follow-up video in which I'll make an orbiter which has enough fuel to come back. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I'm loaded into KSP2. And first thing first, we want to get the MK1 tin can into our build in the VAB. And that's the command module that I'm going to be using. It's a small one. Uh, and then we need a parachute, obviously, if we want to make this thing be able to come back, except, like I said, it won't. Next thing's next, probably most important, is the heat shield. We need a heat shield so that this thing doesn't burn up in during re-entry. Although KSP2 does not have the um, mechanics for uh, heat damage, it will soon, so we need that. Next, a decoupler uh, for the... Uh, uh, oh, why did I put a stack separate in there? Uh, like, I'm, I'm recording this after I recorded the videos. Uh, so, uh... You want to put a stack decoupler, not a stack separator. Sorry, I, I realized that later, so I fixed it. Um, and this will be your final stage. I believe that one at the top. You, sh uh, you should start from the top to the bottom because it really is much simpler. And uh, I'm going to be putting one of the small fuel tanks over there, smallest one. And I want a swivel engine, a sustainer engine. It's really the best to get into orbit. And another decoupler for the second stage. Yes, we do need a decoupler. And then let's get our larger engine, I mean fuel tank, and I'll put another small one just in case we have less fuel. And then I'll put a launcher engine, the Reliant, and I love the Reliant because it's just reliant, reliable, whatever. Um, uh, I love the uh, Mammoth as well. The Reliant and the Mammoth are just like the same thing, just on different scales. And these are my favorite engines for launching. They're like literally labeled as launch engines. And I think I may have packed too much Delta V in this thing, but that's okay. Uh, next, we want to get our radial decouplers and set the symmetry to 4, guys, like you saw me do earlier. And we want SRB, solid fuel booster, solid rocket boosters, whatever you want to do. So these things, they actually have solid fuel in them, like um, the uh, gunpowder and all. And I'm just going to be uh, dropping one of the smallest ones, because, you know, this is a small rocket. And if we put too much, we'll have too much Delta V that we don't need. It's already like 4,000. Yeah, that's, that's too much. And then I'll put a small nose cone uh, on top for less drag. And uh, there are no need for struts on this thing because of um, the uh, like the SRVs are so small, you don't need any more. And let, let's launch. Uh, I think this this is enough. Let's let's launch this thing. And uh, yeah, here we are on the launch pad. What you want to do is when you want to go east, like which is right side towards the ocean here where my mouse is pointing. And uh, you want to do that when you're about 10,000 uh, uh, feet up with like smaller rockets. You can do that if you have a stable rocket, you can do that lower as well. But I like doing it up there because, you know, um, it's much simpler. And we have the cute sounds in the background of the Kerbals gone down. Yeah. Um, they have made, uh, like, sounds much better in KSP2, and that's a water system to cool the launch pad down, I think, make sure it doesn't burn up. There we go, we have launch, and as you can see, oh, shucks, I messed up, I messed up big time. I was supposed to do the staging, the, uh, big engine was supposed to, uh, come active at the same time as the SRBs, and, uh, I put them in a different stage, now we're gonna go back to the WAP to fix that, um, yeah, let's go back to the WAP. Uh -huh. There we go, we're back in the web. Um, so I'll just drag that down there and get rid of that unnecessary stage that we don't need. And now we are ready to launch, and I'm just gonna skip the countdown this time because you guys already heard it. Skip the countdown, yeah, there we go. Uh, we're up in the air again now, uh, and this time we're all set to get into orbit. And, uh, oh, okay, this thing has unnecessary amounts of Delta V. We're going up too fast. The SRBs won't be over in time for me to perform my gravity turn, and that's just really gonna suck. See, it's like already at 10th, and now we can, like, just get rid of the uh, SRBs. There we go, we staged, we got rid of the SRBs. Now we can start performing our gravity turn, but as you can see, it's sort of 10,000 of already at 20,000 meters, and I'm a bit too high, and for some reason, this is not working. This 
this. Fright controls are still absolutely horrible in case we do. There we go. I got it. You want SAS to be turned on and locked at all times when you're manually flying, because otherwise, you know, it's just gonna suck. And oh, 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 oh okay. I think that's too, that's too steep. That's too steep. That's too steep. Well, let's go to our apoapsis and make a maneuver node there. Maneuver plan, whatever. I'm used to KSP1. Maneuver plan. Let's burn prograde over there and uh, get our orbit. Oh, okay, that's, that's too much. That's too much. Let's make it this one. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, point towards our target. That's our target system. And then I think we can stage now. Uh, close to staging now. Uh, but no, let's just let's not waste the fuel. Uh, let's time warp to that point in our orbit. Now we can. Uh, like we're like 24 seconds, right? Yeah, we are close to our burn. One thing KSP2 has done is they have made flying m with maneuver nodes so much simpler than KSP1. I used to spend so much time in KSP1 trying to do this correctly, and it never worked. Yes, I do use it in windowed mode because you know when I put it in full screen, it just minimizes the window every time I go to another one. Um. Uh, Okay, approaching partially out of fuel. Uh, right, right, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you should have staged. All right, um, uh, I'll just go ahead. As you can see, that blue line, you can see that blue line over there, which has the warning that I'm going to crash and land. Uh, that's my orbit, that's my current orbit, and the brown line is the orbit I want. Uh, and if you're new to KSP2 and you didn't understand what I said, you can go to the training center, but I really don't like it because it's like page is just absolutely useless. There we go. We have an orbit. We have our periapsis above the ground now, and we have circularized as well. Circularized. There we go. There we go. I'm so happy now. All right. Uh, we have two less fuel. We cannot. We cannot go back to the ground. Our orbit isn't exactly circular, actually. I may have messed up a little bit, but that's fine. Um, let's just get rid of that. We don't want that. Get destroy that. That's our previous stage. Mm, and this is all this was all for the video. Thanks for watching guys and uh leave a like. Please subscribe if you like this video and if you found it helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next one.